Welcome to the APO Productivity Talk. I am Engelbert Caronan, Jr., President and the Chief Executive Officer of the Development Academy of the Philippines and today's moderator. Today's topic is Enhancing Productivity through DXPO. For those unfamiliar, DXPO stands for Digital Transformation Driven Process Optimization. Process optimization and enhancement of business process management aim to reduce costs while increasing performance, productivity, and efficiency. Process management and optimization are also critical for a successful digital transformation or DX. Research shows that DX-driven process optimization can produce far superior results when used strategically based on the urgency or priorities based on productivity, efficiency, or market needs, or based on the speed of implementation, risk mitigation, cost reduction, and optimized time management, among other things. To discuss this topic and answer some of our questions today, we have invited Dr. J. Rajasakera. Dr. Rajasakera is currently Vice President of Tokyo International University, he is also the Dean of his Graduate School of Business and Commerce. Previously, he was associated with the Graduate School of International Management at the International University of Japan as its Vice President and Dean until the end of 2017. How are you, Professor? I'm doing great. You know, I'm glad to be here, uh, Mr. Uh, Konnan, and uh, I'm talking from Tokyo. Thank you, sir. Now let me share with you a little bit more about Professor Rajasakera. His professional career started in 1984 at Bell Laboratories in New Jersey, USA, following his PhD. Among the contributions he made while at the Bell Laboratories include designing computer algorithms for the world's first undersea fiber optic cable, T88, between US and Europe which saved millions of dollars in construction costs. He co-authored four books and published more than 50 management and technical articles in refereed journals and business magazines. His opinions have appeared in the Wall Street Journal, Nihon Keizai Shimbun, Japan Times, plus a number of other publications in Japan and other places. We are all very eager to learn more about today's rich and interesting topic and get the presentation started. Professor, as you begin your presentation, can you please tell us what is DX-driven process optimization? Uh, I believe everyone had heard about DX and uh, the digital transformation, which I'm going to talk a little bit in detail. And uh, so this is about using the technologies to transform things, businesses, organizations, factories, etc., And the process is the kind of steps that uh, any organization, when they want to do a job, some task, and they have to go through. These processes are involved in factory, factories, in, uh, in machines, in clinics, in, uh, in any kind of service kind of organizations, and, and, and whatnot. And so today, I'm uh, excited, in fact, to explain, you know, how to you do this correctly, or do it right, how to apply DX into process optimization uh, uh, correctly. Thank you, sir. Uh, professor, you can now please start the presentation. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so today, topic as you uh, heard is called DX driven uh, process optimization, DEXPO. And this is something about how to use the digital transformation to improve something. And this is a must do, I think, in any organization now. If you don't do it, you are done. And so that's why I, I feel that this is uh, important. And so I have a, my own framework. And then the DXPO is also a word, in fact, I created. And so I go to explain and how to do it and how to do it strategically and how to do it right. And so today, the contents, you know, I talk about the DX process. I talk about the design thinking. So this is, you know, something that had been kind of separated from DX. 
but I bring design thinking into DX. And then I talk about the DX team, what kind of team you need, and uh, to do the process optimization strategically. And so I also talk about three cases, uh, three, uh, yeah, three cases. And one is if you want to do it internally, and if you have the people. And the second one is, you know, you have some people internally, but you don't have the whole resources. So you partner with somebody. And the third one is you have a small organization and internally in the company organization, but then you can partner with the cloud partners, particularly if you now uh, uh, contribute uh, your your data is in the cloud and which uh, uh, many companies are now you know putting the data into cloud particularly after this uh, pandemic and so in there i, I also uh, in, uh, included you know several cases as you see here from shinsei bank jr east uh, and komatsu and toyota and the digital transformation, uh, I'm sure everyone had heard about it. It appears everywhere in the internet, in the newspapers, you know, and talks and, uh, you, you know, schools teaching from Howard Business School, MIT to all the schools and started teaching digital transformation. And the uh, and uh, so all these things started, in fact, the, uh, as a result of the internet. And so I like to highlight this point. And a three-minute call in 1984, before internet came, and cost uh, 15, 30 yen. So this is in uh, today's money is about, you know, I don't know, today yen is a little cheap. But in general, we can assume it is about $15 to make a call uh, to United States from Japan. And this thing had gone down dramatically with the advancements of digital communication. And uh, particularly with the, the invention of the uh, the optical cables, you know. So most of the the, 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 the telephone calls started going through the, the optical cables, you know, as data. And so this made it very cheap. And now if you ask somebody how much money you, you pay, you know, to make a call, you, they'll say, no, we don't pay any money because you have WhatsApp, you have Viber and all those things. And so if you have an internet, you know, it is free. And this free, you know, free internet created so many opportunities for, you know, creating trillion dollar businesses now. Amazon, you know, two trillion or something, you know, Apple, you know, and all these companies. And and they thrive thanks to internet. And they Google, of course, and Facebook, and many millions of, you know, if you search here, uh, at dot com domains in in, in 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 internet you find more than 30 million dot com domain names you know and the <clears throat> so the what is dx and the dx is the digital digital part means i call the digital pillars they are the, the foundation of digital technology one is the hardware and the computers you know the mobile phones anything you know that you can touch you know and the uh, networks and all those things, you know, this is hardware. And the second is the software. So the hardware wouldn't run, you know, without the software. You need the software. And this, so you may hear, you know, people call it Python and people call it, you know, the C, C++, Java. All these are software plus the software tools like, you know, the, the, the uh, enterprise resource planning or ERP you know excel for example they are software you know and the things that you use every day you know maybe word you know excel all you know software and then the data and the data also became big in fact recently because of this internet you know and because everything you know that you see on the street cameras you know sensors the moment you open google is data they collect them you know and so the data became big but this data is useless, you know, if they sit in a machine without knowing, you know, without telling uh, what they are or without explaining, you know, the use of that data. So converting that data in, into information is the key. So information like chart, you know, and uh, sometimes we call infographics, you know, and the, all those things, you know, come from data. You use the data to plot something you know, to create a draft so that we can understand. 
you can make a decision by looking at it you know and this is called the information now who who benefit from this information and in fact the data to information is done usually by a team of people or the people i call the knowledge and those are the people who have some strategy to see oh this data must have something hidden in there and let's look at it and that team is called the knowledge team so these are basically it people or oh, people who knows about it they may not be programmers but they know what is going on you know and they so they can tell or oh, use this technology or oh, this is there or oh, this can be done in ai you know that kind of mindset comes to those people and so those are the five digital pillars i call and this knowledge people also you know and the knowledge is is kind of in fact ai and machine learning are replacing some of their roles now because this the these tools a the artificial intelligence machine learning they are also software but the software take the role of this decision makers and they make the decision so they also become a digital pillar i call okay and the, so with this digital pillars and the decision making has become data driven or become in data driven and uh, the so in the in a, in a, in a business or any kind of organization and uh, we have you know some things we, sometimes we call them operation you know the large part of business for example sales department can be an operation you know the marketing department can be an operation manufacturing can be operation so i use this word in this uh, presentation and to describe large kind of a, a set of activities which with those activities i call processes okay so inside an operation there must there can be many uh, uh, processes and so if you look up you know this kind of a uh, uh, diagram and this is a process diagram describing you know some kind of a, 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 a manufacturing company and the manufacturing company also let's say a toyota they make automobiles right and they but they just don't make automobiles they also sell them right so they have to distribute them to make the automobile and they have to get the parts and they have to manage the supplier so you see the suppliers in one end and then the customers and then after service all of them and they are operations the big one, big sections are operations inside there they have processes they do okay so the this process uh, the uh, uh, understanding is a key and for uh, using uh, digital transformation uh, strategically and the <coughs> so operation as i mentioned involves uh, uh, the uh, uh, processes and the uh, and then you know for example this allocate inventory and can can be considered a process when process become large you know and the uh, uh, it can be also uh, we, we call them operation if the process is very large and process involves many many parts of sub processes or large number of processes inside can be grouped together we call it an operation okay but the key thing is the 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 process you know, the steps basically key steps that uh, some activity goes through okay and the <coughs> so this is the summarizing that thing uh, operation is made up of process operation can be improved by improving the process so if you want to improve the sales uh, operation you improve you look at the processes in there and then you improve them okay and so this is the the way to uh, improve and when i say optimize optimize means that you look at those processes and find the one you know that gives the optimum or the maximum and uh, and 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 focus on that and then go on you know and maybe the second of uh, the 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 uh, the important uh, process etc so this is the the optimization process process i will explain in detail uh, as i go on okay so the, but the key is the process so when you look at this kind of processes okay and the design thinking is another thing that comes into very be useful when you want to improve the process 
okay and uh, design thinking you have to think about who's using who who's who's the main you know the customer or who provide this so uh, this service to this process you know who operate this process so this can be the customer so you emphasize if it's a machine the operator of the machine is a customer and what kind of pain you know things you know that the person goes through you know and he does the job but the quality is not good so he cannot make high quality products okay so that's a problem okay and uh, now if you look up the, the the customer side on that one and the customer also thinks oh this machine you know doesn't produce good ones you know this uh, you know low quality and then they don't buy it you know because the quality is low okay so this is the they we call this emphasize empathize empathize means you assume that role of the customer the customer can be the operator of that process or the person you know who's in charge of that process or it can be the person you know who's using the result of that process okay and uh, and then you know the <coughs> to in the in the design thinking okay these five steps and uh, uh, defines the the design thinking process okay and uh, construct a point of view that is based on uh, the user needs okay the so if you look up this user and uh, the, what is what are, what are the things you know that needs to be improved so you you look at them okay and you define them these are the ones you know that needs to be done and then you think what wh how how can you do something on this uh, this uh, to improve it okay so you ideate meaning brainstorm and come up with some creative solution okay and the, so the now this needs some understanding about what kind of solutions are in the uh, that you can do okay so you need to have some knowledge about what is available to solve this type of problems are there any digital solution okay so this is one place that you can apply that digital transformation and then prototyping prototyping is another one you know that you you think about the digital uh, kind of a solution and then you prototype okay so these two are the digital things you know and uh, you you think about it can you do it digitally and then you do it you know for example uh, google and i often you know site is this auto focus camera you know in the old days you know you want to take a photo you have to do manually you know turn the lenses and all those things and they, but now the camera is automatically focus you know so they new set it up of course and so this had happened due to that digitization of that process so digitally internally you know it works and it gives the best you know the, the it's focus at the right time it stops okay and so this is a, a, an example and likewise there are many you know in the, in the product inspection for example you know Uh, there are a lot of the machines which uh, pick up the bad parts automatically you know this is also uh, 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 an example of you know how you use the digital technology to do that thing and so there are so many you know if you look up you know in in, in practice in inventory management in, in, in many places you know if you look up insurance company you see the how the ai is used and again the ai does this part you know it automatically and fix some things you know the fraud of cases etc and so this is another one and in financial you know the uh, accounting you know accounting problems etc so there are so many uh, examples of this uh, the uh, finding a digital solution okay and then you prototype means you, you find a solution and test it you know if it works and uh, and then you know the uh, if it is of course not to not doing properly and you can go back and you know and you can improve that process and of course you have to do it you know several times sometimes particularly if it is a new kind of technology and uh, and you can you have to do it you know or this auto focus and all those examples i gave you and they didn't happen overnight you know people spent time <laughs> to improve the algorithms and various other things that you may have heard of and so this is how the digital thing the 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 design thinking and uh, is getting involved with the digital transformation or dx okay 
and uh, the so people when you think about the design thing and they think that oh the designing the, the product very nicely you know, look nice and you know and it feels nice no not that the design thinking is how you make it work properly and efficiently and cheaply you know and then without errors you know reduce increasing the quality so that's how the design thinking uh, works and must be deployed so this is why i'd like to introduce this thing into dx uh, and the dx pole okay and the <coughs> so when you want to apply the digital tra digital transformation to optimize process and there are several ways to do it and i see on the on the on the orange color one dx team and uh, i see you know the what kind of resources you need internally so you can have internal team you know maybe some people who knows that technology as i said okay and you need some people who can who understand who can see the uh, process and see immediately think oh maybe we can apply this technology they don't have to do it they must get the idea this can be done then of course exploring part you can do you know if you don't have the internal team if you have an internal team of course you can discuss with them and uh, so i have an example of this one involved in the shinsei bank that i will explain in a moment and the other option is you know you have an internal team but they have some skills but they don't have all the skills needed then you can also partner with a strategic company or organization you know a consultant or you know some software company and and then they do the job okay and the third uh, way that uh, the di digital transformation can be done is you have internal uh, uh, people who understand it now i all three you know i have internal written there because you need the internal somebody there who understand that this needs to be done or this can be done and uh, and they must have a good vision also without that you cannot do the digital transformation you know if you ask the, the the partners and other people to do it they do whatever they want to do not what you want to do okay so these are three things and and the recently the po getting popular is this third option internal because and and the cloud partners because many companies <coughs> many companies had resorted you know to storing their uh, data in the clouds particularly after this covid because people couldn't go to work and you know and they didn't they didn't have the access to the their data and so the companies decided oh let's put the data in the cloud so they can access from anywhere so the data are in cloud that's not the only reason but the data are in cloud you know because of security reasons and because of also the 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 distribution of data you know the how easy it is you know when they are in the cloud and the, <coughs> so the these three things you know i like to discuss with three examples uh, and as i go on and the process and uh, so the process is you know something as i explained in uh, the the kind of a key step in a, in a, when you're doing some activity and uh, they say it's a factory or something and uh, if you take the examples of toyota for example i i mentioned the welding welding part you know of their doors for example and that's a process and the welding part of body is another process okay and uh, if you are in a, in a, in a, in a hospital or something they have various kind of processes you know when the patient goes in and the patient has to check in to the hospital and you know and register and so that is one process then go to through the doctor and the doctor consultation another process then if they want to do the operation and other things that's another process okay and so these kind of things you know the are, are processes and these processes and uh, the <coughs> they you dealing with the customers and the customers can be as i explained the person who operate in that process or could be the customers who interact with that process okay so they have something called pain points pain point means they have problems doing it properly or they can be improved okay so if you look at it sometimes the the pure person who operated things are that oh, there's no way that you can uh, get rid of this process but there may be some way if you look at very carefully with the knowledge of digital transformation or oh, this process is not needed or it can be improved drastically you know or we, do, we can 
completely replace that person, put the person somewhere else, you know, by a, di uh, a digital uh, uh, process. So this uh, custom oriented, okay. And oh, if you think about the, the 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 customer who interact, the customer can be benefited. You know, oh, we can give but much better quality. We can do it quickly. We can serve the customer quickly. You know, and those kind of things are there because the customer may be you know going through a lot of pain. You know, by waiting in the line. You know, and by the, the pain that they get the, the bad quality. You know, the quality of the product is so poor. And some of the the, the 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 processes you can think as strategic. Okay, this can be a strategic kind of a tangible uh, 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 benefit or intangible benefit. For example, it can be strategic in terms of cutting cost. You know, you have a process that is taking a lot of people's time, the workers' time, and and a lot of time consuming. It can be improved by a digital process so this is a, a tangible one because it cut costs okay it can be also intangible in terms of improving the quality you know you know, imagine that the autofocus one and it improved the quality of the photos right because in the old days you know people take photos and by many of them are out of focus and now you know many of them you know crystal clear because of this uh, the process and the and the many things you know in the old days you know the poor quality you know because you know the 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 they are the, the machines didn't produce them right and oh you know they were not properly inspected and now many things are, are done automatically you know using the digital uh, processes scanners and others automatically scanning remove the parts you know, bad ones and <clears throat> so and and thereby benefiting the customer by giving a, a superior high quality product so high quality means intangible okay and so the the the, the process the uh, the can be thought of as a strategic process and <clears throat> so sometimes you have to do some process improvement to stay competitive because all the other competitors you know and your people and they have done this if you don't do it you are out you know, and just to stay competitive, which is not a very good strategy itself, you know, you have to do better, of course, but at least to stay competitive and uh, you have to do some of these, uh, the, the process improvements, okay. And uh, so how do I, you do it uh, digitally? So this is the, the examples that I like to go through. And the one is the internal uh, DX team. So you have uh, good people in the company who knows you know the digital technologies the five pillars i mentioned they are very well aware of that and some of them also knows how to do you know the particular the software and uh, they know and they and they have a team of knowledge people who can tell them hey this is the kind of data we need this is the kind of information we need to do our job okay so internally and they have that people and then you can do this thing this is little costly and also in the old days they used to do it in the old days in fact many of the dx used to be done by big companies you know and they uh, because it cost a lot of money to have a big it team you know so when i visited shinsei bank they had 100 people uh, uh, it people you know and working in 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 that bank trying to improve the bank's operations as a kind of a uh, a, a trailblazer uh, uh, kind of a project in Japan, you know, this Shinsei is a bank uh, that was kind of, it, it's a, it was a government bank, it had a different name and went bankrupt. Then the bank sold this, uh, the government sold this bank to a, a private uh, fund and so those are the people who named it Shinsei and then you did the digital transformation to improve their services to the customers to get the customers and also improve the quality okay using the digital transformation and uh, so the it's a customer driven strategy okay it comes from the top and uh, the so that includes increase the revenue and uh, the uh, develop as a strategic application to attract more customers and using a internal dx team okay 
so I met you know this is the the, the president of the bank Mr. Yasuro and uh, and also the chief IT architect uh, Mr. Divedi and I talked to them and uh, when I went to talk to them in fact they had done this and then they said that oh they came to see how we did it <laughs> and what they meant by they was the largest computer company that time in the world and the largest uh, the telecom company in Japan and they came to see how they did it because it's such revolutionary kind of a thing that time okay and uh, and, and and done with much less cost than a typical bank okay and so they look at you know the I, I mentioned to you the process they look at the process in the bank or the operations they found that these two operations the internal the the the, the consumer banking operation okay individual customers and they are you know the the customer numbers had increased and uh, whereas the corporate customer numbers has going down so they thought oh we should focus on the consumer bank and then they look at the processes that the consumers go through you know when you do the the, the banking in, in in with Shinsei and what kind of things that these customers you know uh, are expecting or they come to the bank to to receive or do something like to transfer money to deposit money to get loan or whatever, whatever. so those are processes okay inside there there may be also sub processes and they so they look at in these processes and what kind of pain points that the customers go through now again i said the pain points can be internal the workers and they also go through pain because they cannot serve the customer the way they want because they don't have the tools and also it could be the customers customers suffering because you know they are too expensive and too time consuming you know the poor quality and so they, they those are the pain points in you know, both sides and then you know what uh, the uh, they, 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 they found were and uh, through the interviews and talking to the customers ATM fees you know when you transfer money etc etc use the ATM machines to get uh, various services you have to pay money and it's too much all the banks in Japan you know, they charge money still they charge some of the bank okay and it's expensive and then that's one of the major complaints and so since you thought hey let's try to do this let's try to cut this fee you know so that the customers will come to us and then went through the process why do we have to charge people money and then they found out you know there are a lot of unnecessary processes or the thing that goes through you know the when the customer you know do something uh, want to get the service and so they use something called the uh, divide and conquer approach divide means you look at the, the entire operation and divide means you look at the inside so basically when you divide you look at the process okay so you look at process by process okay and then then you know this you look at you can look up the the uh, design a new way okay to do this process versus the old way using the digital technologies okay so the uh, the mr dvd and his core team of about 40 50 people carefully examined and broke the existing system with the existing that operation okay and just like chopin and elephant elephant is the big operation the process 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 and then you improve the process okay using the digital uh, means i have written a case about this and the, the uh, so I, sh uh, I, I, I I mentioned they are in fact they did this they improved and in fact removed those uh, the 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 fees from many banking operations okay so what does it do it helps the customer right and it helps to attract more customer to the bank and and also they provide more services you know in this ATM machines than before you know by improving the, the interface design and other things so various things and they did also fraction of the, the money that a typical bank you know the, the the spent on IT and some banks as you see here you know and it's been billions of yen you know and the, uh, and the billions of dollars sometimes okay 
and uh, the uh, so she said did it much cheaper okay and the <coughs> so the the second case i like to uh, describe of digital transformation is internal uh, plus the uh, strategic partner and this case involves the jr east jr is the japan railways you know they operate the railway lines in tokyo and around japan and the so they wanted to improve their customer service okay this also a customer driven strategy and also they want to cut costs you know and they getting perhaps potential new businesses and they thought about it so they had somebody internally they thought oh maybe we can use some technologies that is sony is good at and then talk to sony okay and because they are internally jr and you know jr is a railway company and they probably didn't have enough it people to do this job okay or that enough technology there you know, they are good in train technology but not in it okay so they cooperated with sony and so they look at you know this kind of operation this is a train station and these are you know that you see in this little diagram i have a video also on this one and uh, in uh, i took uh, in uno station to show when i give these lectures i show this one and the customers come here you know when you go in a rush hour or something you know large number of customers you know if you go to some station called shinjuku is the largest world's busiest train station still busiest in the world and uh, and you see so many people come and they have to you know and get a ticket and go through these machines or whatever and the and then you know get to the train now imagine you know if this machine it takes a long process to check this ticket there could be a huge line right and so they they thought oh maybe we should look at that situation and so the customer pain is the waiting you know they have to get the ticket and put it in there and the, so when you look up that one and uh, it used to it used to take the uh, it used to take uh, the uh, 0.7 seconds and uh, so now you know the the uh, the they created a, 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 a new system by instead of using the magnetic card okay let me go back to the previous one the the magnetic card in the old days you get to make ticket in the machine it takes time and then you know you put the ticket into the into that machine then the machine checks you know and if the person had you know the, the, they paid the right amount and when they are take, getting out particularly and they and then all those things that entire process has some sub processes you know the the make sure the the right amount you know is in there in the ticket and you know and and uh, it's enough to get out of this station etc and the processing time is 0.7 seconds and they, they improved it using this contactless card and this technology called suica came from sony and so together they deployed this one in that machine so now you don't have the magnetic card you just hold it hold the card and just pass like this as if you were just walking okay and you don't also have to go to the the machine and get the that ticket and so they are by saving considerable amount of time and they are by benefiting the customer so when this card was introduced customers thought oh this is great you know we don't have to stay online you know and so the, this card became very popular okay and uh, now 0.2 second was 0.7 is but more than three times faster you know and and they are by you know the, the customers saw the benefit and then they so we started getting this getting used to this card so the cards became very popular you know? and now they say more than 80 million cards are in circulation in japan and when the card become popular jr goes to uh, the convenience stores hotels and shops and tell hey our card is used by so many people why don't you allow our people to use this card to pay you know for merchandise and then the 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 those convenience stores and other people they did so and now it started a new business so they get a new commission right each purchase they do through that card you know, they get a small money you know and then then you know they expanded it right so this uh, became another business for this 
just that operation improvement you know and they uh, created a new business so these kind of things also can happen if you carefully strategically planned you know some kind of a digital process transformation that benefits large number of customers okay and the the third example i like to go is using the cloud partner as i mentioned many companies you know because of various reasons and they have resorted to clouds and which can include the security reasons and also the large you know the, the quantity of data and that they cannot have mesh their own machines to store them very costly they rent the clouds so the cloud operators like amazon you know the cloud aws azure google etc and they provide these services and komatsu komatsu did that you know and uh, the uh, they have a cloud service and the uh, and the uh, then they uh, uh, used a cloud partner called snowflakes and uh, which is the uh, us company okay so i'm going to discuss that and also toyota toyota did uh, with the uh, 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 company called pega system which is also a cloud company and operating in the in the in the, in the us and uh, the uh, so these are like the mega cloud you know the uh, operating and the, in the uh, in, uh, in in the US, but they are worldwide. You know, this uh, the the Amazon. You know, they are in Japan too, and other countries. So worldwide, you know, you can contribute. You can put your data in there. Cloud means they are anywhere in the world. You you don't know. Even they don't know where the, your data is. But when you need it, they are there. Okay. So the 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 commercial example. You know, I I, I show it here, and the commercial. Commerce needed uh, to help the customers to keep commerce machines running smooth and cut maintenance cost. You know, so to run the machine smooth means, you know, these machines work under very hard conditions in the mines, in construction site, disaster zones. You know, you see the big machines. You know, they they make bulldozers and those kind of heavy machines. You know, and they so. They they want to you know uh, create a system to benefit their customers and to minimize you know the 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 their their maintenance cost and also running the machines. Those machines are expensive, by the way, and uh, and so you cannot sit them idle with because of a part failure. So commerce should keep track of all these machines around the world and uh, 24 hours or whatever the time they operate, where they operate. And how long they operate, so that they can kind of uh, use some uh, the artificial intelligence means to 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 plan the wear, you know, the of those machines because their parts, you know, wear out very quickly in some bad, you know, uh, terrains and and some places, you know, they the operations are in a, not in a bad place, so they can last long. They, but some places they, they they don't last long, you know, because you have to replace those parts, and so it's going to keep track of all these parts, all these machines, and uh, and then the the their service centers can get this information, and and then have the parts ready there when the customer comes in there, you know, the part is ready because they know that oh this machine is been used, you know, heavily, it need this part, and so that is the service. Uh, called the customer driven you know and it helps you know the commerce to of course in terms of their sales and the customer service and the quality of service etc and it also help their their own uh, the, the the those uh, the service centers people you know and uh, they have the parts ready when the customer comes they are ready you know so this is the the, the one example that uh, they happen you know is the, the in commerce by using uh, a cloud partner help you know them to create this uh, this uh, the, the the service and these are the kind of machines the the, the commerce use you know and uh, in those the commerce makes and you see the size you know if you go, <laughs> these are huge machines you know I, I have visited some of these factories in some countries and uh, the big machines and so they you know the data solutions and they did uh, you know with the uh, 
the snowflakes uh, as I mentioned and the so snowflakes you know created these charts and other things so that the commercial service center people can keep track you know and the customers also and they can look up some of this data and see you know the, their situation and replace the part before it breaks down you know and by doing this so they, they cannot because they don't have the facilities to do that but commercial provide it okay so this is the dx transformation to improve their this part of the process okay and the other one is uh, is a toyota and the toyota you know also uh, has uh, keep their data in uh, in uh, the, in the clouds and uh, toyota as you know is a, is a large operation around the world you know more than 100 some countries you know and uh, 160 i believe if countries and uh, the uh, and uh, has Toyota, you know, uh, Toyota, whatever, their products. And they <clears throat> so to serve these, uh, these products, uh, the, to, to service them, etc. And they have service centers too. The service centers has the workers. And the, so the workforce quality optimization, that is the objective of this Toyota uh, uh, DX, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, digital transformation how do you improve the workforce quality when somebody comes you know for service they can they can serve them very quickly okay so this is done you know using this uh, the strategic application of the digital transformation by increase the quality of service and the keeps keeping also the customer loyalty this is very important you know for toyota you know I once went to Middle East uh, to to Dubai, and then uh, took a safari in, uh, in 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 UAE, and uh, they said almost all the the cars they are like like the SUVs running the safari they are Toyotas <laughs> because they have they 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 are reliable they say all the other cars are the the you uh, SUVs their engine blows up okay. And the, so the Toyota, you know, to keep that customer loyalty and they provide, you know, good service and through this kind of the, the providing the, the tools for the other workers to serve the customers. Okay. So they did that, you know, with the uh, a cloud company called the, the Pega systems. So earlier they had a paper based system and they automated it, you know, not just automated it. And they provide, you know, the, uh, the, 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 this is how they look at it. You know, they took the process and did uh, the uh, kind of improvement of the process. You know, this is the design thinking basically. You know, you look at the process and find out, you know, where you can use the digital part, okay, to remove the customer suffering, okay. So this is what I call the design thinking. And then, you know, they, they, they propose their approach. And this is the what you know I called it I the, in the design thinking, you ideate, right? You think about it and then you 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 think how you can do it digitally. Okay, that's what this is. And they and then you know the this is the customer. And so they this is Toyota customers, okay? And so each one of them they get for their measure the computer, the what the the, the information about, you know, the 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 the, the Toyota customers, okay, and uh, so when the customer comes, you know they know you know what kind of you know services they must do. They can pull out all the information about them, and then all the information about parts, etc. And depending on you know which kind of customer service it is, they provide that tool to improve their the the the, the, the efficiency, okay, and improve their efficiency, and thereby the the customer loyalty, etc. And, uh, and then, you know, that's why the Toyota has big, uh, uh, it's, it's, in fact, it is the most uh, the popular automaker now, right, in the world. The, so they said that uh, the, in, in their report that the, uh, the problems, you know, with the, uh, the field problem handling, you know, the problem handling decreased, 300% decrease because of the system, you know, 
and the and also their efficiency you know the supplier engineers efficiency increased dramatically because of this system okay so this is the digital transformation and i discuss you know several examples and so to summarize you know if you look up the old way and new way old way you must have a internal team as i mentioned in in case of uh, shinsei and the new one is you know you have the cloud systems and so the data is there and also there are a lot of this cloud service providers like snowflake sepika systems and so many okay and so if you don't have the internal resources and uh, but you must have somebody there though that who understand this can be done strategically okay so that person you know must think you know using the design thinking and then they maybe even find the pain points and then think about the implementing strategy do it internally probably internally you don't have people then look up the cloud uh, uh, the service uh, uh, providers okay and then you know you need a, a local dx expert to do this so the all these the top 3 uh, are done by a local uh, the person in the company or organization and they must understand you know what kind of technology is available and then then you know what kind of people they can be used to do this and then go look for those people and implement it so this is the dx process optimization optimization part comes in fact from the looking at them you know and then giving some cranking and so if you look up the uh, each process okay and use the design thinking you know and then think about which one is most useful or adding most value to the customer this customer can be internal your own service organizations employ and to do their job better who outside customers to to and so you give points you know and now this is a little subjective this assume that this is a very important one and the in terms of the value to the company then you give high points so this is a point out of 10 1 to 10 scale or 0 to 10 scale okay and so in this case i let's say you put the eight points the somewhat uh, uh, critical uh, uh, operation and then you know the implementation potential now now you need people to do this you know dx team now can you find a good dx team to do it now if you don't have it then you give low points if you have the team then you give high points okay so this again depending on you know you use internal or the cloud team so if you have the right cloud team to do this job which can be done now you know with the the online resources available you know in, in the use for the cloud services service providers so if you have the right people then you give 10 and then you know you, you, you i i calculate something called the impact here impact means the customer value times the potential so i give 80 points for the impact of this operations dexpo okay digital transformation so likewise you know you give points you know for each operation and uh, the you want to improve you know or apply the dx and uh, and then you rank them and then in the ones that get the highest points and those have the high priority so you implement them first okay this is what i call the optimization you optimize that processes you know which process need to be done first or they can be also done parallel you know, if you have two different teams and uh, and and as such and you rank them and thereby you know you improve the entire the operation using digital transformation so this is called dexpo so this is what i wanted to explain to you everyone today and uh, how to use the digital transformation and uh, by uh, using the design thinking to optimize processes and improve the efficiency improve the quality or whatever that benefits the, the that creates a value to the organization or the company okay so thank you so much and uh, so my uh, my uh, my contact information is here so if you want further information of course you can contact apo and uh, or if you want to contact me you, know, you are welcome to contact me thank you so much Thank you professor 
It is wonderful to see all those real-life case studies on DX-driven process optimization. And we hope that the audience were able to pick up a lot of information and are able to apply it in the real world. Now let me start the Q&A session. My first question for the professor is, uh, what are the roles of management in identifying the processes to be optimized? Or how can leaders guide or create a vision for this? Uh, management, I think, must have a good vision. You know, what they want to do. And so this is the key. And once the vision is there, and then they can put together the team and create the strategy. And the, But the key is the vision. So that is the management role, I believe. Thank you, sir. Uh, for the next question, sir, uh, people are usually reluctant to change the way they work. How can, how can we bring all staff on board for process optimization? Uh, this is a good question. Uh, in fact, you know, to, to, I think we have to share, you know, the, 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 with the, the organization, the kind of problems, you know, we are going through. And the best way is to show them the data. And, uh, you know, and that's what, in fact, Jeff Bezos did, you know, in creating uh, Amazon, uh, uh, the web services. And he told the senior managers, tell all the organization, show the data to everybody so that they'll find something, oh, we have the data now, let's do something, okay? So this, in fact, led to creating the, uh, the Amazon Web Services because internally they created that so-called the data warehouse and then they became successful and then they said, oh, why don't we do apply these technologies to offer the services to the, to the world and created the Amazon Web Services. So the key part, I believe, is the, the, the sharing the data. And, and, and whatever the information that is hidden in that data, and you can now, you know, and show through charts and other things. Japanese companies used to do it. You know, if you go to a Japanese company inside, inside the factory or whatever the sales office, you see a lot of charts and the data shown on the, on the walls, you know, and this is to get all the organization involved. Okay, the third question for the professor. Are there any methods to measure the success of process optimization? Yeah, this is also a good one. Uh, in fact, the success is the, the result, you know, and if the efficiency had increased or the quality had in, improved. And uh, so that those are the success, the measures of success, right? And the, the again, it depends on, in fact, the vision and the, the, the strategy that the, the senior management uh, thought about, okay? So to accomplish their vision, and you can use this as metrics, they has the, the efficiency increased, you know, and that kind of metrics, and sometimes we call KPIs, and uh, should be created and, and measured. In fact, not just to measure the success, but also keep it continuously going, you know? And uh, so that is the, the key for successful uh, uh, deployment of Dexpo. Thank you for that, sir. The next question is, which skills are required for successful process optimization? Um, you know, in fact, you know, you don't really have to be a digital expert to, to successfully deploy Dexpo. But you need to know, you know, what is available. You know, it's like, you know, you go into a, 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 a supermarket or something, and they, so you have to know what you're going to buy, you know, if you want to do the, <laughs> that shopping, you know, so that uh, you won't miss anything. And so same, same thing. And what is available? So that kind of knowledge is enough. And so that is what, you know, the, that... Uh, the, the 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 senior people or managers should realize and they should know what uh, is available what kind of technologies are there and then also know you know what kind of human resources that is uh, needed so those two i think are the key and for the uh, the 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 people you know skills you know that you need you know for uh, dexpro thank you sir 
So do you have any comments or recommendations on organizational culture to support successful process optimization? Uh, based on you know, my, my experience talking to many companies, I think the open mind is the key. The companies must be open to changes. And uh, you know, sometimes you go to a company and you know, they don't want to open the books, they don't want to show the data, then things don't work. And they should have an open mind, you know, and just show them, tell the people, this is why we are, you know. And of course, you know, you don't have to show the, the confidential data, but the uh, you can tell, you can uh, describe, you know, what is available and what the problem is. And the, so that is the key, open mind. Thank you, sir. Uh, what types of tools or software applications you, you recommend for process optimization? Mm. I think again, you know, going back to that data. So if you start showing the data, and uh, sometimes you know you need to also plot the data and plot that thing as charts, etc. So some kind of simple, you know, the tools like Excel, etc., et would help. But of course, you know, you can extend them to include, you know, the uh, the ERP type, you know, uh, software, and th you can go on and on. In fact, you know, if you want to get into the tool business. And the uh, you know there are some uh, you know the AI you know machine learning and very expensive and very sophisticated tools. But you don't need now. You they are mostly available in clouds now. So if you have that right partner, and they will do it. So you don't need very sophisticated tools, and uh, in even the hardware, because if you rely on the cloud, yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, what are some of the challenges you see? for continuous process optimization in the public sector? Uh, that is also an interesting question uh, because when you think about the public sector, I think a major complaint is the time, you know, and the people feel that they are not very efficient. It takes too long, you know. I think this had happened, you know, because they have not given enough uh, uh, tools, their processes, you know, they, the employees go through, you know, to help the, the, the customers and they don't have enough uh, support and uh, from the organization. So this is something I think that can be done, you know. And uh, now there are so many, you know, the workflow management, you know, the the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the di digital uh, uh, transformation tools available, you know. In fact, the, the both cases I mentioned about Toyota and, uh, and Komatsu, and uh, particularly that Toyota case, you know, and uh, they give, you know, the tools to the their service people, what, you know, what they need, you know, the, as soon as a customer appears. And, uh, but that hadn't happened in many public organizations. So that's why it takes time. Professor, we know that design thinking has major linkages to process optimization. Which skill sets are required for design thinking and how leaders help others to acquire those skill sets? Uh, I would say that the major one is the design thinking. And, the, uh, and uh, having all the employees, you know, and understand that there's a process and uh, the, that uh, has to go through and uh, think about the customers and think about, you know, what can be done, you know, to improve this. So that design thinking, you know, kind of the mindset in the, uh, the, the, the employees and the managers, I think is a key to deploy, you know, the, uh, the, the digit Dex Pro, uh, I, I, I think. So if uh, I were manager or senior person, and I would uh, train all these people in design thinking, at least the managers. Finally, sir, um, can you recommend any online resources that our audience could use to help them start the transition to design thinking process optimization? You know, this, as I mentioned, uh, DX4, DX4 is a kind of a word, you know, I created. And so if you look up Dex4, you probably won't find many. And perhaps, you know, this, uh, the, uh, the APO, you know, the video could be one thing. And, uh, but the, the design thinking, digital transformation, there are many public information. 
but i would uh, suggest that they think about the apple apple has become a model you know for many of these things and the uh, so i have some you know the uh, the <coughs> references that people can use and if you put in google you know apple uh, how apple use design thinking and you run into you know some reference material and uh, so this is some source to start with and the steve jobs you know for example and uh, they he defined in fact this design thinking uh, what it is and after that only many people it became a mainstream so this is uh, uh, a good place to start with and and also another good one you know that uh, the i myself had used as reference is uh, this book and uh, is uh, the about john ivy and the john ivy is the is a designer is from uk and steve jobs hired him you know <laughs> and he's not a it guy you know and he probably know a little bit it but he's a designer he's one of the closest people to steve jobs according to a biography about uh, john ivy and uh, so this one describes in fact how that design things you know and the uh, thinking had uh, uh, created the kind of the, the 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 things that work you know without uh, needing any manual you know you see that uh, the iphone and all those you know the apple products you know you don't need any manual to to read them you know to operate and uh, so this comes from that uh, uh, that thinking you know so if you do the uh, the 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 correct you know the text for the as i explained and you don't need any manual or anything you know and things must be intuitive you know the workers can intuitively feel oh this is where we should look and then they look that is there you know so this is the kind of uh, the the things that you should do then and so i i recommend uh, this book as somebody if somebody want to go deal deep and the the other things you know in fact now you see a lot of things in in in, in youtube etc you know available and also the business schools and they offer courses you know how business school offering a course on design thinking and the uh, so by connecting them you know to this digital pillars etc and this is a framework you know i i teach and i i also explain to some companies and how to do design thinking so these are uh, kind of uh, things you know that i have uh, been uh, uh, telling people and uh, under dexpo but uh, the the the, the this uh, design thinking workshops are there and the courses are offered you know as i said and so a lot of material in the on, online you know you can you can do thank you sir for your uh, great insights um, yeah, do so you have much, any sir. final thoughts yeah thank you so much uh, mr conan and uh, for your kind uh, participation in this as a moderator of this one and uh, so this is a, a, a thing that any organization you know as you mentioned a public sector or a private company or you know private organization whatever in the service business manufacturing business they cannot avoid you know this digital kind of wave you know that is going on now and uh, they if you don't do it you are done and so it's a, that kind of situation you know because the things are becoming more and more digital you know i was just reading recently in the automobile the largest part of the the automobiles value going to be the the, the digital part you know all these engines and other things and they going to be secondary so this could have major impact even on big automakers you know, like toyota etc we are putting more emphasis on hardware and versus the the this uh, digital pillars you know and uh, so the you have to take them into serious consideration so that is my uh, uh, the the final advice for people and think digital transformation seriously and uh, and understand you know or educate all these employees about you know the digital thinking uh, design thinking you know particularly the managers and uh, so that you know they can come to you and tell that hey, you know this is something we should do and the technology is available why don't we do it you know and and then the cost effective ways also i mentioned using the cloud platforms so those are the ways that you can really implement them now versus old days you know and the, the in the old days you know as i mentioned uh, in in since a bank there's a team 
in fact when i went to talk to them you know they had 100 people team it people only you know <laughs> doing this and it's a it's a very high you know the expensive operation and but now you can do the fraction of the the cost and so there's no reason not to do it so i suggest everyone to think about it and improve you know and that's uh, to make uh, the life easy for customers you know and uh, and also for them to stay in business so that is my advice with that thank you once again professor for joining us i'm sure our viewers enjoyed the presentation and your talk please continue yeah, watching apo productivity talk and subscribe to the apo youtube channel thank you so much sir